Okay, we are online. Not yet. No, you are Right, good afternoon, everybody. We are here for our uh, first of 2023 Mass Holding Services meetings. It's two o'clock and we are about ready to start. We've got one or two people who aren't here quite yet. I noticed one of our members, has, I've been informed, has a, a puncture on his bike and he will be here as soon as he possibly can. So we'll make a start. So I suppose what we first item is we don't have any formal apologies for absence, do we? Sure, no, we don't. But at the moment, we still don't have Patrick Schmier or Matthew Davis, as well as Patrick Champion in the way. No idea. Perhaps they're all coming on the same bicycle. <laughs> um, <laughs> declarations of interest. We have no declarations of interest. There's nothing <coughs> on the agenda I feel is controversial. People feel a need to declare. Am I correct in that? Good. No worries. Uh, public questions and petitions. We have. No, no questions. No public questions or petitions. So it, we come on to the minutes on pages five to eight. Uh, is everyone content that the minutes are an accurate record of the meeting held on the 30th of September? Um, Marion. Um, Alice and Birmingham have asked me to tell you that on page seven, um, the, uh, for the county council, it should be a SAM 2 unit. A SAM 2 unit. Yeah. SAM 2 unit. On page 7. Yeah. Right, right yeah, down okay. at the bottom. Can you make a note of that? Yeah. Oh, I've got it here. It's fine, I've made a note. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, other than that, no other comments on the minutes? Everyone is agreed on the minutes? Agreed? Yep. Great, no worries. So, we can move on now then to. Item uh, five, Mousehold Heath budget monitoring, which starts on page nine of your notes. And who's going to present that? Is that you, Susan? Or? Yes. Right, great. Right. I'll move to page 21, which is the draft budget for next financial year. Um, as you can see, there are there are increases um, which what we wanted to state is obviously these increases are um, areas beyond our control. So that would be um, uh, staffing staff um, salary and pension increase, but also um, in amenities such as water, electricity, insurance and so forth. And obviously, because of the cost, the increased cost of materials, that will be reflected in the general repairs and maintenance as well. So, those um, increases have been reflected um, in the, the budget there. But I think we we'll agree that areas which we are under control, we are sort of keeping at the same level. So, trying to make savings where we can. Mm -hmm. That's reflected in that. So it's reflecting the general cost of living for everyone, really, in, in our own budget. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's fine. So is there in, anything else in the... Nothing else. Anyone's got any questions? Yeah, any questions on item five from anyone there? Does it all seem relatively clear? Okay, so that's item five covered then. That's good. We can move on to item six, which is the budget and <coughs> fee statement. Oh, sorry, that was that. I well, just said that. Do you think that? Yes, I'm confused. Can you just go back? Yes, sorry, sorry I do think that's my right. fault because I did the budget and fee set. Uh -huh. so, so going back to the budget for this year end. Yeah, then we need to come I back do apologise. Then we need to come back to the precept, Mr Chair. Right. Yeah, no worries. Clarify that, no worries. <laughs> right, okay, so just to be clear for uh, the um, video recording, this is page 9, Mouse of Heath Budget Monitoring to 30th of November, pages 9 to 14. So... Oops. 
So referring to page 13 and 46, which is the outturn report from April to November. Mm -hmm. um, so has anyone got any queries on that article? Um, yeah, this one. Um, Councillor Galvin. Thank you. So on page 13, just the tree works and variants. Um, I just wanted to ask about that. Yeah. Represent. Again, I mean, this this is out, out of our control. That's that's part Could of the contract. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, so this this is part of the uh, general maintenance contract. So this it, it's tree safety works, um, which um, obviously the, the costs for them have gone up, uh, and and that's reflected in our in our budget. So we we use NCSL um, for works along the. Along the highways, car parks, uh, large dangerous trees, uh, and then the wardens cover the rest yeah. on the heath. So the so the costs of the costs of tree surgery have gone up, and that's what that that fairness is. That's right. I mean that that's we, we we don't have control over that. So that's that that's come through the um, the contract. Right, okay. Do we have any more questions, questions. concerning this section of the, of the uh, agenda? I noticed on um, page, page 11, item 4, it uh, talks about that, um, shows a forecast underspend of £4,562, which I assume is a good good thing, and of course that re also reflects increased income from pitch and pump as well, so that's, that's great. Yes, yes. No worries, right. Does anyone have any other questions? Martin, yeah. Councillor Peake, sorry. Well, thanks, Chair. This is uh, going back to page 13 and looking at page 21, I'll come back to this. The contract cleaning, uh, has the salary gone up for them or I was wondering why the contract cleaning has changed? <coughs> the contractual services is under review. Oh, wow. Anyway, so we're looking at all the contractor services that are provided, which is the cleaning and, and the grounds maintenance and so on. So that entire that in its entirety is being reviewed. So there may be some fluctuations in that, but we're looking at cost reduction, not increase. Yeah, okay. And that's always good. Yeah. Okay. So any more questions on item five? Just the monitoring report. The monitoring report. Yeah. No more. Okay. So. The, uh, I think the recommendations were to note that the um, um, monitoring report and the reserves position. So we're all content with that. Thank you. Okay, great. No worries. So now we can move on to item six, which we've touched upon, page fifteen to twenty-two, which is the uh, budget and precepts for twenty-three twenty-four, which starts on page fifteen. Um, you sort of covered on that. I did. My, my apologies. But as I said, just to reiterate, um, there are increases, but the, the areas of increase um, are areas of block control, and they cover things such as electricity, ground maintenance increases, water charges, insurance, things that have gone up naturally due to the cost of living. So, again, okay, are we uh, content with this item, which is you know, the uh, budget and precept? So I'll just look at page um, page fifteen. We uh, have a series of recommendations there to review the forecast balances, consider the risk management arrangements and prudent minimum levels of reserve, to review the budget processes, uh, proposal, sorry and to resolve to place a precept on the City Council for the relevant amount for the 23-24 financial year. Um, everybody is content with that? Could we just um, sort of have a formal show yeah, of hands? Yeah, a formal show of hands. That's the most important thing you vote on yeah, each year. As a, that is the budget, yeah. I think so that's, that's unanimous. unanimous. Thank you, Chair. So that's, that's good. So that's the item covered. I'll just take that off on my list. We now move to item 7, which is the annual work programme for 23-24, which starts on page 23 
and go through to page 36. Are you continuing? Yeah, so we've got a precept in place. So, again, Susan, is this your show or is this I your think we're just going to go into well, a bit more detail with this. Yeah, so you see a, a breakdown, <laughs> see the breakdown of the uh, work to be carried out uh, in line with the management plan and HLS agreement. What page are you looking at there? Um, from, from, from 29. From 29, yeah. right. Okay, yes, just right. so we're clear. And you can see the allocated budget codes um, to, the, to the project specific specifications. Um, as you can see, a wide, wide variety of works, um, largely a continuation uh, of previous years, uh, and again, uh, in implementing objectives from the Maritime Heath Management Plan. So, do we have any questions about that? Councillor Galvin. Yeah, um, thank you. I'd like to say it's um, uh, an impressive list of work um, yeah. and um, very clear. I just wanted to ask if, is that, do you find that a useful plan, the way you work to that sort of plan? I can see there's a kind of a, an importance rating, a priority rating. Um, and who leads it? Um, just to ask really about how that works out for you um, in terms of managing it. Do you manage that work plan and that document? And, yes. And yeah. is it the same as, as it is every year? Um, is there any things that you think you're addressing on it? There isn't. Um, there's, there's small changes um, that, that are made, and that, that I mean, a, a couple of things have been flagged up before the meeting, so we'll we'll make some changes. Um, one one of those was the um, um, war memorial, which, which was down as um, should, and uh, and that 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 is a must um, to do. So there are there are subtle changes that um, to, to, to to maintain. Uh, and also, um, we we yeah, I mean we we regularly, not Nigel uh, and, and myself regularly, uh, work our way through and then match up with the management plan and the HLS project, uh, and we we make sure that we we implement all the objectives through the plan. And yeah. um, yeah. we did have just one other slight change at the bottom of page one. We talked about the environmental strategy, which is to contribute to the delivery of the council's environmental strategy. That's down as a should, but uh, we had a, a brief discussion to decide that that should be a must. And to include the biodiversity strategy as well. Councillor Galvin. Thank, thank you for that, and um, thank you again for all the work. I just wanted to clarify what's that process by which they go from how do you assess whether they're should, could, or must? And so that was done through the steering group to change it. Those ones will have. Do you want to explain that? Really that, no, no, that so, yeah, that that was um, when we were planning the, um, the the current management plan, the green flag management plan. So Simon, Simon, Nigel, and myself sat down, uh, and we, based on our knowledge, we we basically prescribed what one of the three words to the, the objective. It's an element of judgment there, yeah. Yeah. Mm. which is, is, obviously it's not perfect, but it provides a good framework and gives people an idea of how to prioritise things. So you need something, and so that seems to be a relatively good we can, tool to use. And we can discuss it here, yeah. if, if we feel that there's any changes, like we've done today, that yeah. it's a, it's a workable yeah. document, so if we feel that there needs to be some methods, it's good to Council raise that here. Yeah, on page 34, um, the Calvary track mm -hmm. to manage the cultural features, historic landscape, culling, cutting. After all the work that was done on there, shouldn't that be a must rather than a should? Yes. Because we've done, you've done a hell of a lot of work there, haven't you? Well, that's but, um, been really, really good. Absolutely. Um, and along with the War, War Memorial, it's something we prioritise already. So yeah. yes, that should be moved to, to must. Um, I also note 
on where are we? page 30. It talks about public toilet provision review, but that comes up in the supplementary agenda, so we'll deal with that in more detail when we get into that part of the agenda. Does anyone have any? Uh, Marion. Um, yeah, a bigger fund that you've got as well. Yeah. Sorry? The vinegar fund. The vinegar pond, what page are we looking at there? Should the vinegar pond be a must, considering it's perfectly dried out over the last page summer? Page 35, top page, page 35. Yeah. Second one down. <coughs> I was just thinking about the goldfish, but they're clearing out. Right, well, again, I think we should take Will's um, steerage on that. Yes, I would agree that, that it's a must. Well, yeah. I mean, at, at, at the time, that, that, that there were lots of, uh, there's obviously a, an extensive list. Yeah. Um, and, and we, at the time, um, Simon didn't want to put too much down as must. Somehow try and prioritise and then amend as we go, um, which, which, we're, which we're doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. What, yeah, <laughs> yeah, years before, yeah. We'll have that down as a, as a must then. Anything else anyone would like to raise in this section? Yeah, John. Uh, no, no, Chair. I, I just wonder, following on from this discussion, we've moved several things from should to must, whether um, at some point, perhaps before next year's um, work programme, we could have some feedback from um, Will or others as to how many of the things that were listed in should have actually been achievable because obviously you know this is this is to give us some idea of priority but Will's already said that for example the cavalry track although it's down as a should it, it gets priority so it, it's treated almost as a must. Mm. So obviously it would make sense to have some indication but it would also I think be useful to us to know what in practice how many of the shoulds in practice are, are unachievable for whatever reason. I think that's uh, an question. Question is that probably most of them do get done. Yeah. Um, well, as a group, we would discuss that as part of, of as Will's sort of performance, but we would mm. discuss that as a group anyway. So yeah, we certainly we, could prepare yeah. something. To yeah, we grab. put an awful lot on the shoulders yeah. uh, well, Will's and people who work up there, so we, yeah. we don't want to sort of um, overburden them, so to speak. So that's that's an excellent idea, so we'll make a note yeah. of that. And we certainly will review it anyway, so yeah. that could be part, that could be presented. Yeah. And so I think might be an idea, if, yeah. if at some stage we'll, um, as the year progresses, if it looks like some things are going to be a little bit on the difficult side, it might be worth, say, an interim review. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. Susan is suggesting that we can use a Okay, we've got a we've got a subgroup coming up on on is it the tenth of February, right yeah. Friday the tenth. So maybe Nigel and I could could, could feedback. Yeah, I think that would be good. Just to, as long ago, because I think it's a good point, because and then to see where. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. three, or eighteen, so yeah, three or four years on. Um, it'd be good to yeah to, to, to give feedback on that for for, yeah. for, for our benefit <laughs> as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's excellent. So we have to consider the well-being of the people who work up there as well. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay, so that's item six, so just a quick review of the recommendations on page 15, was it? I know the wrong page. Page 23, it's recommended to conservators to note the contents of the report to secure implementation and commitments made within the management plan objectives to deliver works outlined in the works programme and keep it in budget for 23, 24 financial year. Everyone is content with that? Just a quick show of hands, perhaps? That's good, that's unanimous, that's great. So we now come on to item eight, which is the Mousehold Heath Management Update, 6th of September, 22 to December 22, which starts on page 37. So that's Will again, right? Autumn and winter are always a busy time on, on the heath. Um, outside the, the bird nesting season is, a, is, is, the, is the time to, to conduct scrub clearing and, and path management works. Um, so the, um, 
litter picking, um, there's been um, extensive uh, litter picking undertaken. Um, the fires in, in, in the summer exposed, um, well, we cleared around 15 bags of, um, of, of, of litter on, on St James's Hill that, that's kind of that congregated underneath the, that, that collected underneath the, the gorse there. Um, so thanks to all the volunteers that's been involved, most hold Monday and Tuesday group, TCV, Household Defenders. Um, uh, so additional additional work there. You, you may have noticed, but um, there's there's been um, um, some graffiti some on, on the heath. Um, some trees were sprayed up up, up Gurney Road, and um, myself and a volunteer had a go at removing that. Um, very, very difficult on trees because you, you, yeah. you can't you can't use um, graffiti remover, um, so we had to scrub with with water. And um, we made a start, but that's an ongoing ongoing um, process um, for that. Also, um, graffiti on, on on the bandstand, um, and and generally um, a lot of extra work regarding vandalism. Uh, and um, the um, interpretation board was stolen, which you'll see in here uh, in the pitch and putt car park. It had to be replaced. Um, so um, I'd say I'd suggest an, an unprecedented amount of um, vandalism, sadly, um, we, 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 which has resulted in um, some extra work um, to. Um, Deep backing bollards, um, install benches, and remove graffiti. Um, so that's that's partly contract and partly if we can do it, um, self and volunteers um, do that. Um, so moving on to a, on a more positive note, the Gilman Road Wildflower Meadow was cut using size for the first time. Uh, so thanks to your support. Um, we there, there were two side courses. I'd, I'd already been trained, uh, and, uh, and now 16 volunteers have been trained on 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 side on the safe use of sides. So that means that, that more of the um, wildflower areas uh, on Mouse sold that the grassy areas can be cut safely by, by side. And also a number of TCV volunteers were trained, uh, and they they're involved with um, sites all over. Norwich, so I think they do some siding in Earlham Cemetery and many, many other sites. Um, so thanks for your support. Uh, we can now uh, sort of move, move away from 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 mowers and, and move towards um, size um, where it's safe to do so. A uh, really interesting course on there. Um, it didn't it didn't grow this, that that much this year. The the sward unfortunately, and it kind of joined with with, with the drought, but those still enough to cut in the in the autumn. Um, so it, uh, yeah, lots of invasive gorse. Um, uh, invasive by pockets of gorse are really good for bird nesting and species like um, green hair streak butterfly and, and other moss. Um, but it is invasive in, in some heather areas and, 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 and uh, gr grass, wildflower areas. So it needs to be cut back. Also, once it becomes leggy, uh, it can become a fire hazard. Um, so we've stepped that up th this year uh, and we've been clearing um, lots of uh, leggy gorse uh, and allowing the, the sort of pioneer and the mature, the, the, the young gorse um, to, to um, kind of create thickets for, for, for bird nesting. Um, but that's been an ongoing, of course we had to burn, um, re remove all the, all the burnt gorse on, on St James's Hill which was uh, which took a, a while. Um, a messy job too, I would imagine. It was, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were covered in, in soot, um, and uh, some of it was uh, was chipped, uh, and uh, yeah, it took a, a lot of time up there. Um, so that was in addition. Um, so yeah, tw twelve hundred, uh, over twelve hundred community volunteer hours on the site this year. Very, very pleased and, and, and thankful for the Mount Hull defenders that, that have increased their work parties this autumn uh, and, and actually the, the, the numbers have increased as well uh, so that, that's really good again they've been involved with creating fire breaks around the vinegar pond area um, again clearing leggy gorse 
so when I say leggy, it's, it's old gorse, and it's generally um, sort of ten years plus. Um, it becomes leggy, and it's it, you know it, it, it's not good for the for the birds nesting because it's not compact enough, and it becomes a, a fire hazard. It, it would have been managed in, in, in the past for for, for bread making, um, so the local people didn't have access to wood um, during Tudor time. So it was a very very valuable source to heat their ovens hot, hot enough to, to bake the the staple bread. Um, so it would have been managed a bit like a, a coppice woodland um, for um, for the local people in those days. But obviously now we're doing it from a fire and conservation um, perspective. Um, so yeah, going back to yeah, fantastic work from our self defenders. You, you'll see a number of group, uh, Norwich High School for Girls, that have been coming out on Monday afternoons. Um, they're two um, commercial groups or two, uh, so that's Crown Commercial and also WSP, Camp Council, corporate groups. Um, so they, they, uh, they sort of come out as part of their corporate responsibility. Harford Manor School, uh, good gym. Um, so a wide, a wide variety of, of volunteers there. Um, I mentioned the, the, the notice board and the picture and putt. Um, yeah, lots of environmental ed education activities going on and that's that's you know that's that's even more important than ever with the issues that I've mentioned around um, vandalism and um, going to be going into Sprouton School in the autumn um, to do to to talk about the biodiversity of the heath uh, uh, and the, the woodland up there uh, and and as you can see um, a number of school activities um, there's been workshops um, the guided walks program. Um, 10 guided walks, pro, um, guided walks and surveys have been a success. Um, we had a cross country run, 150 runners. Um, there's been a theatre company and two fully booked Heritage Open Day walks. So, one involved the geodiversity of the site, the biodiversity, how it interacts with the geology, and also um, a history walk um, led by Colin Howey and Trevor Nuttall which covered some, the story of St Williams, Williams Chapel and also Kett's Rebellion, um, which uh, we, the, the, the talk was delivered on, on St James's Hill, so it's a really evocative, uh, fascinating talk. Um, and uh, I mean, I think for me, and I had some brilliant feedback about the, the fungi walk, so we had 19 participants on the fungi walk. We found uh, Neil Mailer, the, the Suffolk fungi recorder, kindly came up from Suffolk, um, to lead that one, um, and he found four new species for the site, and, and, and now we're up to three, 302 species wow. on, on, on mouse hole. Uh, and again, as the woods get older and, and as dead wood builds up, there'll be more and more fungal species up there, along with dead wood invertebrates as well. Um, I'll quickly mention um, some local historians involved with the um, American Air Base at Ratheath, um, Ratheath Aggies they call them. Um, they, they're working to restore the air base up there. And they, they, they offered to do some volunteering to, to look for um, war um, activity, um, training areas on mouse hold. Uh, and I've been working with them. Uh, they've been doing some metal detecting and also um, under our um, guidance um, and they found um, some interesting areas that are marked on the historic map so I've, we've contacted Gresson Hall Hist historic environment record team there uh, and they're hoping to come out and have a look uh, at, at, at the site um, so um, there's a sort of training area just off the Long Valley uh, and um, air aid shelters um, so, um, Anderson shelters which um, which um, are of, of course, uh, historic importance. To come right up to date, um, I had a um, work experience a student start with me last week. So Ethan is going to be working with me until mid-June. Uh, Eastern College, he's studying land and wildlife, um, of course, so he can help. Um, again, it'd be good to have uh, a youngster on the, on, on the, on, on the, uh, on the heath helping me. And again, we can cover a lot of work that we would otherwise have to raise orders for. Um, uh, so, yeah, re re repair in infrastructure, uh, um, such as benches and, and bollards, uh, and keen to give him a broad broad range of, 
of knowledge and skills um, to, you know, to obviously to pass that on to the next generation. Um, had, had a really encouraging start. It's going to come out on Monday afternoons and Wednesday, uh, and uh, going to try and involve me as, as much, you know, as many project areas as possible. Um, mentioned the Sprouston School, so again, looking forward to um, heading up there um, and. Um, Generally a busy time, uh, but still lots to do uh, before the bird nesting season starts in early March. Mm -hmm. Do you see um, closer liaison with Eastern College in the future with this sort of thing? Because it obviously it's of immense value. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, I remember when we had our itinerary, you spoke about some of the plastic bins being replaced by metal ones and I noticed the cast iron bins are mentioned here. I would imagine quite a few of those have been done mm. by now. Mm. I don't know where the cast iron bins are stored, but it might be worth making a note to make sure wherever they are, they are secured because someone somewhere will have the bright idea of saying, let's send these for scrap yeah. and then they we'll want some more cast yeah. iron bins. I think so, NCSL have got them in the store. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, I don't know whether everyone's noticed, but there's been some bin changes just outside here and some ones in the last few days. So as the, as the cast iron bin, bins are available, they will be installed. So we should actually have another batch due yeah. to come in. So we, someone but we're aware where they are. But they were quite expensive when they were, they, when they were, when they were um, created. Yeah, so they're imagine. definitely worth worth keep, keeping keep hold of. So we're, we, we know where they are. Oh, so. good. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have any more questions about this section of the report? Um, <laughs> Councillor Kidman, sorry, I'm running away for a moment there. Thank you, Chair, that's all right. Um, yeah, I was just going to uh, a comment and, and a question. I was just going to comment on um, what a brilliant, um, detailed, and thoughtful management uh, report it is. And I was also going to mention the themes and how brilliant it is that the uh, bins that can be burned and can be replaced by the, the metal bins, that's brilliant. And also uh, the fact that the, uh, the sign that was vandalised was made of metal, so it was probably stolen for um, scrap metal, and it's going to be made, or it is made out of recycled plastic now, which is brilliant, I think that's really thoughtful. My question does involve um, illegal activity, I was just wondering, it's a bottom of page 39.14, the wooden bollards in Britannia Road, car park and um, they've been reinstalled um, after they illegally removed. I was wondering, um, whether, I don't know if I'm jumping to conclusions, but whether the uh, removal of the bollards um, was perhaps um, by the people that used the car park for their car meets, whether the bollards um, would have been thwarting their activities and whether that's a possibility <coughs> that they would have been removed by those people. Just wondering what your thoughts were on that. Good point. Could well have been. Um, they're extremely difficult. They're, they're anchored down by bags of cement. So how they get them out, I, I don't know. Um, haven't witnessed it during the day. Um, but certainly when we go up there in the morning, we find we occasionally find that they've been pulled out. Um, and like I said, they're, they're, they're very difficult to, to get back in because often the, the concrete is still in the ground. So you can't, you have to break up the concrete to get them back in. Um, and it's an ongoing problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep a, a watching brief on that. Yeah. Okay, so back on page 37, the recommendation is to note the contents of the report. Everyone content with that? Yep. Good show of hands. Excellent, that's unanimous. So that's the end of item eight, which brings us on to item nine, which is the Mousehold Heath Toilets Option Appraisal, which is the um, supplementary agenda. And um, might seem strange, but perhaps this is the exciting part of the report. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm guessing people have had uh, opportunity to read the different bits and pieces on there. Um, Susan, are you talking about this or is this Will? This is me. Right, yep. 
Um, so we um, instructed uh, property services to do uh, a feasibility study on various options with the toilets and we have um, got the two options, feasible options, um, as part of this report. Um, and the option that we recommend um, is option one, which is the refurbishment of the existing DDA unisex toilet facility, which is located um, by the, the main the main entrance of, of Zach's uh, restaurant to incorporate, the, incorporate a hoist and baby changing facility as well. Um, as part of that works, um, the costs are broken down, obviously the cost of the uh, hoist, the upgrading of the of the internal um, facilities, which I mean I, I don't know if, if you're all aware of the condition of the current toilets, but I think we'll all agree they, they certainly need <laughs> a bit of TLC. So obviously we've got installation or cladding, anti-slip flooring, provision of um, this as I said, provision, provision of suspended grid ceiling. Um, the uh, DBA assisted, as I said, we've got a um, that's in five. We just want to make note of the the amendment that you all given about the uh, quality act providing there. The provision of hot water, plumbing modifications, hand dry and baby changing. So it's you know, it's a complete. I mean, it's a complete revamp of the of, of the toilets uh, and the addition of, 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 of electricity because my understanding is that there isn't actually any electricity in the toilet unit either. So you've got the refurbishment of the two main um, men's toilets into unisex facilities um, and then some external re repairs as well to the building. Um, and with the, with the electricity supply, um, we would need to, to um, install that or remove the supply from Zach's um, and obviously we would be paying for the for the, the for the electricity that we use. So all those costs together equates to £36,000 for the complete um, building upgrade. The the ladies' toilets will be closed, um, so this would just be where the current men's toilets are. Um, option two was that we close all the facilities at Zach's and we transfer the toilet provision across to the changing facilities on Fountains Ground Recreation Field. Um, the Fountains football pitch is now used by the V11 youth team that don't require, currently require the changing facilities. So there is an option to actually use the existing referee toilet and shower facilities and actually convert the shower into another toilet um, with a cubicle screen door modifications of the drainage and, and, and obviously using the hand wash facilities and and for two other uh, cubicles because it's quite a substantial space in between the two current changing rooms. It means that the changing rooms will stay in principle but they'd be closed off and this piece, this toilet would be placed in between where the referees, um, if, where the referees um, facilities are. Um, as I said, but that would be based across the road in the, the current where the current changing rooms are. So they are the two options, and as we said, we would recommend the option one. Mm -hmm. But there is obviously considerable Can it is you know cost for that. Thank you. It's obviously a considerable cost, but um, it's going to provide a really good uh, service. I just need to ask: Have you investigated um, solar for the electricity supply? But, we haven't, but I would think was the location. I'm not sure how how successful that would be. With solar. I'm not sure, but we could. Uh, we we could certainly ask could ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. I know there are issues around it. Yeah. It's possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did raise that before <coughs> a couple of meetings ago. But yeah, I can make a note. I mean, if it makes an appreciable difference to the cost then uh, it's probably not worth pursuing, certainly if it can achieve a cost saving, particularly if uh, it includes a you know, provision of some sort of battery storage, that would be good. Yeah. Particularly if cost saving yeah. would be included. Councillor Lovett. Yeah, I just wanted to ask how long the um, refurbishment would take if we went for the um, full option. For... I think it's up 
I think it would only be, I mean, they could turn them around <coughs> fairly quickly. I mean, I've... L- L- Lindsay was going to come to Yeah, that. she was, so I'm not, I'm not entirely, I, no, I can't, no. but as I said, it would be weeks. I mean, it would, once the, the work is planned, they would come in and do that piece of work, because I think you mentioned, made a good point earlier about whether there'd be a portal or something on site mm, to yeah. provide an interim, mm. you know, toilet facility, because there wouldn't be any toilet facilities if they were working on that. Yeah, um, and again, that's something we'll go back to, um, to the property services to inquire, yeah. um, and we certainly can clarify you know the timings for that to be done. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking if it was going to be a long time, whether or not we would invest the four thousand in converting the um, the other ones, so that there was at least some provision. If we don't um, do anything with the um, with the changing rooms, um, with the toilets there, will they fall into disrepair? Do you think, or are they? Um, no, because they're in, they're in quite they are locked away and they are in, in, in good condition. And I know you've used it for groups and school groups and stuff still as, as well. For, for, so for they would the still be used for the V. And the VLEDs will still obviously use the toilets because oh. even though they're not changing, they still have access to the toilets. Yeah. So, so, so that's really that's what to keep them in good order. Yes, and they are clean. So as I said, they they are um, they are used and, and will continue to be used because part of the hiring is that we do need to provide toilets. Good. So yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. So, all terms of perhaps temporary provision of toilets or the upgrade is occurring uh, to the uh, toilets near Zax. The uh, temptation to um, upgrade the fountain ground facility is great, only £4,000, but um, the £36,000 I think would be money well spent. And it also doesn't preclude some future occasion returning to the fountain ground and doing some sort of upgrade there as well, you know, at some future date when uh, budget and finances permit. So, I mean, I personally, and I don't want to influence anyone on this, I personally think option one is, is the way to go. Um, does anyone have any comments on that? Uh, John, first of all, and then uh, Gary. It's also a comment, uh, two, two questions. Um, Option in, in the report, 2A envisages reusing the current women's toilet lock um, as a tool of equipment store. There's no detail in the report about whether that conversion and any repair work on that lock um, involves any costs. There's no, there's no mention of that. But the other thing is, is just that at the moment we are spending I don't know how much of a thousand pounds a year on cleaning for the two toilets. I'm just wondering whether we have any idea whether if we adopt this proposal it will change uh, up or down the, the, that kind of cost. Mm-hmm. Well, I uh, met Lindsay on site to discuss the uh, female toilets um, and uh, they're, they're in such a, a state of disrepair that um, it was going to cost around £3,000 to secure them, to, to replace the rotten wood. Uh, and so um, we decided that it'd be better to store materials in, a, in another place. Um, if we're not going to use the facility across the road, uh, we can store some, some tools in there. There, there, there. There's a meeting room uh, that's separate from the changing rooms on the fountain ground changing room site, and we, and we can store uh, tools in there. Um, the the toilets. I mean, that they're in, so I, I I think we both agreed that that, that changing it, it wasn't worth spending the money uh, on uh, uh, you know trying to restore the toilets just just to store. Mm-hmm. Uh, there would have been a cost just to storing um, tools in there, and um, we think that it was beyond that. Right. So, so we will just yeah. close the facilities off, and it won't be, they, it won't be accessible. Right. So it won't be. Sure that. With regards to your question um, relating to the cleaning, again, we are reviewing all the NCSL costs present anyway, and there will be a review of that. But as, as I said, I think we're looking at cost savings overall with the, the, the amount that we pay for NCSL to the facilities that they... I would imagine upgraded toilets are going to be easier, easier. and quicker to clean. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Councillor Champion. John actually beat me to the question, but um, uh, just for clarity, so the the previous woman's toilets are now going to be secured and 
Thanks. just left in situ with no work, say, oh, a bit of an eyesore, so nothing's going to happen to it. And are we, are we sure they're going to be secure? I mean, I'm just worried about people using it for antisocial behaviour. I think there'll be no, as far as I'm, my assumption is that, that, that the, the actual door is going to be completely blocked off. There'll be no access. Okay. So it will be just a, a structure, external structure. There'll be no access into it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So. If there's no more questions on this. Councillor Kidney. Uh, Councillor Kidney, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's just a, a detail on um, A, which is on page 7 at the top, um, to do with the hoist. It might, it's probably quite obvious, but um, presumably the hoist, is there going to be uh, a sort of an area, of a sort of fold down platform or bed where people can change older children, young people, and adults who need changing? That's where we need Lindsay, but um, it's certainly she. She was. Uh, she stated that it would. It, it, it would be providing all the facilities um, for 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 changing. Um, I don't believe for, there's a space for a large changing bed. I think the cost for that was was considerably <coughs> more, but it is the the standard um, hoist that is provided in disabled toilets to to allow that to happen. So. So, so an unfair play, is that, is that a hoist to hoist somebody from a, a wheelchair onto a, a toilet rather than hoist them onto somewhere where they can change, be changed? My, my main concern being, you know, for, for the provision of people who are too big for change, baby changing tables who currently have to be changed on floors. There's not something that we brought back at the last meeting. Yes. Um, and well, I haven't seen anything where I said that that was too expensive to have that. This uh, hoist is this hoist by, by this hoist is for hoisting people onto a toilet. Yes, well, I mean, the change in facility. Yeah, that... the change in facility with the bed would we were quoted over a hundred thousand. They they are considerably more expensive to do, and obviously, but that that's why that wasn't an option that was put forward because it wouldn't there wasn't the space. And the, the, the hoisting facility, there wasn't the space to actually put that in that in that unit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would have been nice to have it in, in the report, maybe. So that could I think it was in the original, the original report, but I think it because it wasn't an option that yeah. they wanted to offer. I think that's why they didn't put it so in there. But it the, the, in because it was so expensive, that yes. they come back to us. It was they wouldn't because even because it was quote. so expensive, they didn't come back to us at all. Yes, they just right. they just said they just said it wasn't. It. Yeah, because I think there's provisions within the city. Um, and they, 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 it wasn't something that, because it was so costly, it wasn't an option that would that they they offered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councillor Kelvin. Yeah. So just to follow on, up on that, does it meet the changing places criteria then? The, no. This work. Um, you know, I, I expect there's a set of criteria for changing places, which is yeah. I just, yeah. Meet it. No, it wouldn't meet the right. for the adult changing places. No, because it's because it is just beyond the beyond scope in terms much of much beyond the, the scope. Yeah, and I believe there was a program in place to is there one at the um at the forum? Yeah, there was that they selected sites. Yeah, there's going to be one, it's one at the forum. There's going to be one at the museum. Yeah. Did we not look into what Councillor Gibbon said last time about the change of places and see if there was any more money in that pot so that we could actually have the change in place? Because we are, we did, yeah. that I, that we did time, put yeah. that we did put that forward, didn't we? Well, but that was to say they were the decision that came back. I can get the exact figures for you, but as I said, it well, was there's no point if we're not if yeah. we're told we can't have it. I don't need to see the figures really, do I? Mm. If it's that expensive and we simply don't have that fund of budget, no. then uh, it's sort of kind of like effectively out of the equation. Mm. Yeah, I mean, regrettably, but in, mm. in the ideal world, we'd have the money to be able to do all of these things. Yeah. But uh, we simply simply don't. We have to make the best of what we have, and I think what we've got here is probably the best option. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, are uh, people ready to vote on this? Okay. So, okay. If we move to the vote, all in favour of option one, which is spending thirty six thousand on the upgrade. We would like something more, but certainly we can't have that. That's unanimous. That's unanimous. Okay. So uh, that I think is the final part of our agenda, so we can 
That was a fun yes, one. Yeah. So we can call our uh, agenda to a close. And thanks everyone for attending and for your contributions. <laughs>